for the vast majority of people, making money is the biggest cusp to be able to overcome. But once people have made money, the number one problem is no longer learning how to make money, it's learning how to keep money. How do you keep that money in your pocket and not pay taxes on the money you've earned and give 40% to the federal government? That's the big question. And one of the biggest problems is that most people, 90 plus percent of people that make money, do not understand how to keep in retaining and keep it in their pockets tax-free. And so today, the biggest goal is not just how to teach you to make money, but how to keep money once you've made it. Our business model is to teach and educate people on how to do the ground up game in single family residential real estate. How to go in, buy a piece of land and build a house and generate six figure profits doing it. We have a specific business model on how to go in and do so. It revolves around servicing the upper middle class, which constitutes for 24% of home buyers across the United States. That's hundreds of millions of people across the United States that fit into that demographics. A quantity large enough to profit from ongoing forever. We've been doing this for over 28 years. Now, the reality of it is that the biggest problem isn't teaching people how to make money doing that. It's now teaching them, how do I make this money and keep it in my pocket? Because one thing that I did in early years is I would work the first half of the year to get the IRS out of the way and I would work and work and work and build the first quantity of homes that I built for the beginning of the year and say, okay, this is gonna pay my taxes for the year. Now I can go in and make myself money. Imagine thinking of that, like think of the ludicrous standpoint that you sit at when you sit back and go, I'm gonna work the next four months and pay um, Uncle Sam and then I get to work and make the next uh, eight months of the year, I get to go make money for myself. But for the next four months, I'm gonna work for absolutely pot shit zero and make no money for myself. I'm gonna work for our federal government so that I can go out and keep the remaining year's money to myself. That's crazy. I did that for over a friggin' decade. And today, I'm gonna teach you guys how to keep 100% of that. So let's say for take of example, you guys go in, you build four houses over the course of the first couple of years. And you take those four houses and maybe $150,000 profit, that's gonna be a total of $600,000 net profit in the year that you built four. But let's say you built two the year before that, and even the, uh, one house the year before that. And over the course of the next three years, that's a net income of $1,050,000. Now the biggest issue is having to give $400,000 of that money to the IRS. That would suck. So instead of doing that, my whole standpoint on everything is resume up. Because when you resume up to the bank, it's a term that the banks use. To, are you resume to be able to take down the build that you're doing? So initially, you're not even resume to go in and take down a single family residential build. So you have to originally hire a general contractor to do it on your behalf, but you still make profits. And when you make profits doing this, one of the biggest things is being able to deploy that money into something that you can hold tax free. Now, here's how you do it. You resume into an eight unit apartment complex. It's not brain science, ladies and gentlemen. And in fact, never go in and buy or build fourplexes. Unless you're gonna build it, sell it, make a profit and move into something bigger. But if you plan on building or buying and holding, a fourplex is the worst place that you can invest money because it takes one unit just to afford itself. And then if you have a vacancy, you never make money. You're like a hamster in a hamster cage and a hamster wheel running and going no place. And that's what a fourplex is. It's a hamster in a hamster wheel running and running and running and getting no further ahead. So don't do fourplexes, scale into an eight unit apartment complex. And here's how it works. So we go in, you have a million dollars, $1,050,000, okay? $1,050,000 from buying land, building houses, or from doing whatever you do professionally. Um, you guys can go out, let's say you're a physician, a dentist, um, let's say that you're an attorney, a self-employed um, entrepreneur, you have own a plumbing company, a roofing company, a heating and cooling company, whatever it is. You have a million dollars in net profits and you don't wanna pay taxes on this money. What you'd rather do is learn how to cost segregate this money. Now, if you take an A unit apartment complex, okay? Now, this is a simple theoretical example, okay, on how this works. Your rents for two bedroom units, let's say that you have eight units and they're all two twos, two bed, two baths. The average rent nationwide is gonna be someplace in the neighborhood of about $2,100. By the time you add rubs to that, meaning rental upgrades, application fees for credit, 
um, dog and pet deposits. Maybe you have a couple of uh, parking stalls that have covered parking where you put, charge a $50 a month premium on those. You're going to be about $2,200 $2, a month. So $2,200 per month, okay, per unit. Okay, now we go in eight units, $2,200 per month. I want to simply teach you guys how to underwrite the value of this asset. There's a whole business model between, behind underwriting the cost to build this, but today we just want to talk about taxes. What is the value of this and how do I take this asset and pay no taxes on all my earned income, okay? This is your earned income. Okay, now <clears throat> we take this earned income, we take 2,200 times eight. So we take $2,200 times eight units equals is $17,600, okay? So $17,600. We just finished doing a two hour training, guys. So my brain is fried, but I'm giving you guys some reciprocating knowledge, okay? That's $17,600. Now, all values are assessed off of revenue on an annual basis. So if we take that 17,600 times 12, okay, 12 months in a year, so times 12, that's gonna be $211,200. Let's just call it $211,000, okay? So that's our gross income potential, GIP. Gross income potential is gonna be $211,000 per year, okay? Now, we know that there's a 5% revolution on assets that, um, that, that have occupancies in the multifamily sector every single year. Nationwide, that's about the national average. So if we know we have a 5% revolution, we can only function on 95% of this revenue, which means that would be our gross operating income, our GOI. That's our gross operating income, okay? So we take 95% of this at 95% occupancy, okay? Now, we go in times... 0.95, that's $200,640. So we take $200,000 per year is our gross operating income. That's 95% of the 211, okay? What we're figuring out is we're figuring out the value of this asset right here, this eight-unit apartment complex, okay? This is an exact reflection of how you pay no taxes, okay? So it's $200,000 a year. Now, one thing that we know is if you have a fully amenitized asset, meaning you have all the amenities, swimming pools, clubhouses, you got gyms, and you got theater rooms, and you got grass, and um, bocce ball courts, and all the other stuff that has to be maintained. It typically takes those big apartment complexes 40% of their revenue to operate and expense all of what needs to be paid, including property taxes, insurance, and everything. But these ones are simple little eight units. You don't have swimming pools. You don't have clubhouses. You don't even have a sales office. You're mostly selling it off of your phone because it's a lot easier to manage this. So your management fees go down. All of your, your on-site expenses go down. Less toilets, less broken stuff. It's a brand new apartment complex, right? So what CBRE tells us is that it takes 19% of the revenue to manage a brand new apartment complex. But because we know it's gonna age over time, we still underwrite that asset at a 30% expense rate. That covers all of our property taxes. That covers all of our um, insurance costs, all of our maintenance, our uh, landscape guys blowing and cleaning and weeding our property every single week. That covers all our expenses. So we're going to take 30% of this to get our expenses. And the reason is because we want to look for our NOI, okay? Our net operating income, okay? That's our NOI, net operating income. The way you figure out net operating income is you take your gross operating income, which is the $200,000, and you subtract that from your expenses. Expenses are going to be 30% of this, okay? So this is going to be 30% of your GOI, okay? So we're going to take 30% of your gross operating income, so times 0 0.30, that's going to be $60,000, okay? So your expenses is $60,000, so we have an expenses of $60,000, okay? So we take our gross operating income of $200,000 minus expenses equals our NOI. So we have a net operating income of 140K. So 140K is our NOI, okay? Now, value is assessed. So value equals NOI divided by cap rate. Okay, now, we're optimistic the cap rates will go back down to 5% within the next two years. But we're not 100% of that. So we always write in current market conditions. Right now, cap rates are being underwritten 
written at a 6% cap rate because we can get a 6% HUD loan um, right now and we can underwrite an asset and float a 6% mortgage payment to HUD. Now, when we do that, that's gonna give us the value. So we take this $140,000, 40K, we're gonna divide that by 6%, a 6% cap rate. Our value is gonna be worth, so $140,000 divided by 6%, divided by 0 0.06, it gives a value of $2.3 million. So we take a finished value of $2.3 million value, okay? That's our value, okay? Now, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, we can take this $2.3 million value. That's what this A unit is worth. Let's take this A unit apartment complex. And now I'm gonna show you guys how not to pay taxes. We take a $2.3 million value, eight units, okay? So we've got eight units, $2.3 million. The IRS tells us you cannot depreciate land. So if you find a third of an acre and you have a medium density and most municipalities, you can build eight units on it. Let's say for that third of an acre, you pay $300,000. So if you pay $300,000 for the land, the federal government says land never depreciates. God's not making no more land. You can never depreciate land. So you cannot cost segregate a piece of dirt. So we take the land value of $300,000, so minus 300K for the land, we still have an asset value minus the land of $2 million, okay? Now, there's what's called bonus depreciation through cost segregation. You gotta get with your accountants and CPAs that understand both cost segregation and bonus depreciation because if your accountant doesn't understand those two things, they can't help you with this. You have to find a CPA or an accountant that understands cost segregation and bonus depreciation. And typically they are sophisticated real estate attorneys or real estate accountants specifically. Now you take this and you take 80% of that. You can, what the government says is through bonus depreciation and the means of cost segregation, you can go in and take 80% of the asset value by depreciating this light fixture, the cabinets, the roof, the walls, the paint, all that stuff deteriorates over time. So you can take 80% of the depreciation or deterioration value of that asset. So if you take $2 million times 0 0.80, that's $1,600,000, okay? So 80% bonus depreciation, okay, is gonna be $1,600,000. Okay, here's what's cool right here, is that you can deduct this from your net taxable income. So for those of you guys that are not making 1.6 million a year, it's okay. Let's say that you're making $300,000 a year. Well, this depreciate, this tax write-off, it never expires. You could take 100% write-off of $2 million over the course of five years. So you actually, over the course of five years, have a $2 million tax write-off. But even in just your first year, you have $1.6 million, that tax write-off never expires. So if you Take, if you make it $300,000 net income a year, so you divide that by $300,000, you have 5.3 years of tax deductions that you pay no taxes, zero, to the IRS. So if you had a million dollars net income before, you could take a million fifty thousand dollars You still have a $550,000 tax write-off after you take that $1,050,000 that you made buying land building houses as a doctor, a dentist, an entrepreneur, a plumber, a roofer, whatever it is, and you write off 100% of that, you pay zero taxes. That's how you go in and make money and keep money and not paying it to the IRS because the IRS gives you these tax incentives for creating housing. It's not a specific, a specific type of housing. It's not low income housing. It's any type of housing. And if you keep that asset and you depreciate it, you as a developer can take the tax deduction and the reward that the federal government gives to you and I as developers to go out and utilize cost segregation to depreciate your assets and take it tax free. And ladies and gentlemen, this is truly how you compound your success. For more videos just like this, more education just like this, click and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're watching this on repeat, hit hashtag repeat in the comment section and smash that thumbs up button. Give us a little bit of love and continue going out, educating yourself and compounding your success.